Honourable Materia Turing. Mr Chair, I just want to briefly refer to the corporate tax rate which is being cut in part one of this budget, of this bill, sorry. Um, we know that the corporate tax rate is going from 30 to 28 per cent. We also know that this government has an intention to continue its um, approach around alignment. And I wonder you know, whether, and we have heard nothing from, um, as far as I'm aware, from government at this stage, about whether in fact they are intending to eventually bring the top tax rate down to 28%. Um, because if they are truly committed to alignment, that is obviously what they will do next. Um, the question is, are they going to do that? Would they do that in an election year? Um, which is the next budget, will they do it afterwards? Will they tell New Zealanders that they intend to not only lower the top tax rate by 5% in this budget, can twice as much as what has been lowered for those on the lowest incomes, but they intend to give those on the very top incomes another tax cut in the very near future to 28% a corporate rate. Um, this has not been a, a discussion that's been raised yet in um, the debate around the corporate tax rate, as far as I'm aware, and it is of serious concern if that is the intention of government to continue to lower the top tax rate, because the burden of that, the cost of that, will be borne by those at the very bottom. They will pay and continue to pay, not only for the corporate tax rate, through whether it's GST increases or some other form, but also for increasing cuts to the top tax rate. But see, I was um, referring earlier to the, one of the other choices that this government had around how to reduce the gap between rich and poor, reduce income disparity, reduce inequality in Aotearoa. And I was, I was describing the alternative that we had proposed to mind the gap around the in-work tax credit. And I would just, um, just follow up, Sir was saying, that the if this in-work tax credit was extended to those who are on benefits and those who are not working, who are currently don't meet the hours criteria for paid employment, you would see some $60 a week in disposable income going to 130,000 of the poorest New Zealand families. 130,000 of the poorest New Zealand families who have up to three children. And for the 10,000 poorest New Zealand families who have four or more dependent children, they would benefit even more. Because this is about benefiting and supporting our children, the children who need the most because they are the most vulnerable and the most poor. And part of this is also about housing, because there are parts in the bill that deal with housing. Uh, what, what is obvious, and um, my colleague from Labour was talking about this earlier, is that this government has cut provision for the building of new state houses. $100 million, at least, has been cut from the state housing budget such that uh, there will be no uh, upgrades and there will be no building of new state homes. Now, this is a disgrace. We have 10,000 families, 10,000 families on the state house waiting list. And all that's happening is those families are churning around through the existing state housing. Some come out and try to get into private rental housing, some go back into the state housing. It's just this, the waiting list has continued to churn. And this government is doing nothing to provide housing, homes, for our most vulnerable families, for families who are desperate just for somewhere to live. Instead, we have people crowded into two or three families crowded into private rental that is expensive, cold and damp, that's causing them. It's causing a billion dollars, billion dollars worth of health problems from cold, damp housing and overcrowded housing. And yet this government will give, will give thousands of dollars in, in cash to the richest people while families are desperate for just somewhere to live. Somewhere to live. This is the old Aotearoa that we have now, an unequal country where those who, families who need somewhere to live have nowhere because this government will not build the houses and invest in those families. This government will, will spend $10 billion on new motorways, like holiday, holiday highways for their friends. They will not spend money on homes. Homes for our families who need it the most. Homes for our children who are in the worst poverty. Homes for the 200,000 children that live in the worst poverty in this country. Homes for the poorest families who are in desperate need. 
who this, this government doesn't even see those people. These people are invisible to this government. They don't know them, they don't see them, they don't care. Mr Chairman, I want to take a brief call to respond to some of the points just made by the member who's resumed.